This is David Osteen, pastor of Hope Bible Church in Locust Grove, Georgia. And I want to deal with a question that's connected with the question I dealt with in my last video concerning why Paul baptized a few people during the Acts period. And the question is, why was Paul himself baptized? Now, we understand in this present age of grace that water baptism is not a commandment. Uh, obviously, it has no part in salvation. For Paul said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So water baptism was not a part of Paul's gospel that he received by revelation. We understand that the gospel by which we're saved is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. And the moment we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for our sins, was buried and rose again, we're baptized by one spirit into one body. And that's what matters. It's a spiritual baptism. It happens upon salvation, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And so water baptism has no part in salvation. But there are those who say, well, you don't have to be baptized to be saved, but if you're going to be right with God, you got to take the first step of obedience, and it's a door into the church, and it's a public testimony, and it's this, that, and the other thing. And uh, yet when you read the doctrine that Paul gave the church. Now understand, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul is given the revelations of this present age. He writes directly to the church, which is the body of Christ. And when he writes the pastoral epistles, which concerns the proper order and doctrine of the local church, not a word is said about water baptism. You'll never find Paul saying very directly, you never find him saying, you know, water baptism is an ordinance and you must do this if you're going to be a part of the church or if you're going to be a good testimony or if this, that, or the other thing that people come up with. He, the only thing Paul says about it is that Christ sent me not to baptize uh, but to preach the gospel. Now, what Paul emphasized was spiritual baptism. And that it's that one baptism by the Holy Spirit that makes us members of one body. That's the basis of our fellowship, and that's what we need to emphasize. But there are those out there who say, you know what? On one hand, they'll say, you're, okay, you're not saved by water baptism, but then they'll turn right around and say, you're not right with God without it. Now, legalism comes in two forms. You study the book of Galatians, you see it was an issue of not only justification, but sanctification. Paul said, are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So I, I, I'm made perfect in the Spirit. I'm complete in Christ the moment I believe. My flesh getting wet with water baptism, how's that going to add anything? What does it add? It adds nothing. And so, again, if you, if you want to do it as some kind of symbol and you're not trusting in it whatsoever, you know, that's your prerogative. But when you tell people you're not right with God, you're not in the fellowship of the church, you're not a good testament. That's unscriptural. That's my problem with it, you see. That's the issue that I have. Now, I've had many people, I say many, a number of people over the years that uh, along these lines would bring up to me, well, you know what? Uh, Paul was baptized, and you claim to follow him, and Paul did say, follow me you know, in a number of passages. He's the divinely appointed pattern and spokesman in this age of grace. We don't follow a man, but we follow the uh, the man that Christ chose to make an example to reveal things through. So we're following Christ through his appointed spokesman and pattern. And they say, well, if you follow Paul, why aren't you uh, telling people they have to be baptized? Because Paul himself was. Well, he was, but uh, where did he ever mention it? And where did he ever say, you know, I was baptized, you also need to be? He doesn't even mention it. it you got to go to the book of Acts, which is a historical record of the transition period. It's got to do with the fall of Israel, and they're diminishing. It's not a doctrinal book concerning the practice of the church in this present age. Now, there's things we glean from it, and there's a lot in there for us to learn, and it's, and it's wonderful. But my point being, if it was an ordinance, if it was something that was absolutely necessary, even just for church membership, it, it would have been said, don't you think it would be mentioned in the church epistles, the pastoral epistles? But it's not. 
And I'm not going to have time to, to uh, read all the, the references here, but study Acts 9, the historical record of whenever Saul of Tarsus was saved on the road to Damascus, and then his uh, testimony of it in Acts 22 before the Jews and Acts 26 before King Agrippa. And uh, I'll mention some things in there, but I won't have time to read much because, again, these videos, we, we have to keep them under 15 minutes. Um, let me say, first of all, that he was saved on the road to Damascus. And people ask about that. Uh, when was Saul of Tarsus saved? And I remember talking to a so-called Church of Christ preacher who tried to tell me he wasn't saved till he got baptized. And he goes to Acts 22:16, 16, uh, Arise, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's what Ananias told him. And um, yet we know he was saved on the road to Damascus because Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 that um, last of all he was seen of me as of one born out of due time. And uh, he, he was born of God when he saw the Lord. And in Acts 26, uh, we know from Acts 26 some things that's not said in Acts 9 as far as what the Lord said to him on the road to Damascus. He said, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared to thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things, which thou hast seen, those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now, Right now, why he just got off the ground. I mean, just he he's saved. There, he's still on the road to Damascus. He said unto him, "Now I send thee to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me." Now, how's he going to preach that if he hasn't experienced it himself? And furthermore, the Lord's not going to commission a lost man to do this. He's saved. And in uh, Galatians 1, it's clear that um, he received the gospel by a revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, he wasn't saved under the gospel of the kingdom because Jesus warned under that economy that if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, it will not be forgiven you, not in this life or the, that which is to come. And he was a part of that blaspheming the Holy Ghost in Acts 7 when Israel fell as a nation, stoning Stephen, blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, I was a blasphemer, 1 Timothy 1. Uh, he was not saved under that message. He received the new message, the gospel of Christ. He believed Christ died for his sins, was buried and rose again. He trusted him as his Lord and Savior on the road to Damascus and was saved. Now, he gets, he gets more revelations. He got the gospel by revelation there, but there's more things going to be revealed to him about what God's going to be doing in this age. That's why the Lord said to him, I'm going to make you a minister of not only things which thou hast seen, but which I will appear unto thee. Now, uh, Ananias, the Lord tells him, uh, you need to, he tells him where Saul's at, he goes into, and, and God tells Saul, go into Damascus, it'll be told you what you need to do next. And then he appears to Ananias and says, you need to go, and he tells him right where he's at, and you need to lay your hands on him that he might receive his sight. He'd been blinded by the glory of the light uh, of Christ. And he said, you need to uh, lay your hands on him that he'll receive his sight. And uh, he also tells Ananias, and of course Ananias is nervous about that. Uh, he, he knows Saul had been a great persecutor, but the, but the Lord reassures Ananias, no, he's a chosen vessel. And he's going to bear my name before uh, the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. And uh, so Ananias goes in the house there where Saul's at and speaks to him, and he lays hands on him, and he does get healed of his blindness. And then Ananias says, you need to be baptized. Now, where did the Lord tell Ananias to baptize Saul of Tarsus? It's not in the book. It's not said that, that he said that at all. I mean, that's obviously Ananias did what he knew to do because, you know, under the economy he was operating, uh, you know, you, you had to be baptized as an expression of faith. Um, you know, the Lord said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Not that water baptism in and of itself could save in any dispensation, but that under the gospel of the kingdom, it was required as an expression of faith. Uh, they were commanded to do it. And so in Acts 22, when Paul's before the Jews, he recounts this and he talks about Ananias, which he does not mention Ananias in Acts 26 before Agrippa, but when he's talking to the Jews, he mentions in verse 12, one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there. 
he came unto me and stood and said to me, Brother Saul. So this Jew who was devout according to the law, or this man that was devout according to the law, had a good report of all the Jews. He's saying he came to me and he recognized me as Brother Saul. So Ananias knew this was a saved man. He said, uh, the, the God of our fathers hath chosen thee. Thou shouldest know his will. See that just one shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness and all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Rise, be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, he's a devout man according to the law. Okay, so this is what he knows to do. And by the way, in, in the kingdom age, the law shall go forth out of Zion, Isaiah 2 says. And Christ taught the law and taught how in the kingdom they will observe the law. But it'll be a law of liberty, as James said, because they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. The law will be written in their heart. They'll be under the new covenant. And the kingdom disciples are living as a foretaste of that. And so they're living according. And as late as Acts 21, James tells Paul, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe they're all zealous of the law. Now, Paul said, you're not under law, but under grace. But that was a revelation Christ gave to him for the body of Christ. It was accomplished by what Jesus did through the cross, but it wasn't revealed at that time. It was revealed through Paul. So, you know, Ananias doesn't know the details of what's going on here. He's just doing what God told him to do. And God did not tell him to baptize him. But he's doing what he knew to do. And so he tells him, you know, be baptized, wash away thy sins. Now, again, there's no way water can wash away sins, but it was an expression of faith. But notice it's a wa a washing. It's it's a symbolic ceremonial. In John 3, the word uh, connected with water baptism is purifying. Again, ceremonial, symbolic, but under the kingdom message, it was necessary as an expression of faith. Uh, you know, when Peter said, repent, be baptized for the remission of sins, when he said that to Israel in Acts 2.38, in Acts 3, he talked about their sins being blotted out at the second coming of Christ. So they had to repent, be baptized, to be identified with their Messiah, to be a part of that. It's not that water in and of itself saved, but under the kingdom message, it was required as an expression of faith. So he tells him he needs to be baptized. Now, Saul, Saul of Tarsus knew he was already saved, and he didn't have to be, but he went along with it because, you know, you have to understand what's going on here. I mean, he already received the revelation of the gospel, but, you know, he's going to emerge out of this. There's a phasing out, and, and now it's going to be a phasing in. It's a transition and Saul was very careful, who became Paul, of course, I, you call him Saul, Paul. He was very careful in, in how he dealt with the kingdom disciples. And, um, you know, even though he had a separate ministry and a distinct ministry, he understood what they were, uh, he recognized, uh, you know, what they were doing as far as what the Lord had given them. And he wasn't going to cause an uproar and a stir and a refuse it. You know, he knew he didn't have to be, but he went along with it. But he never talked about it, and he never said it had to be done. Now, if you're going to say that him being baptized is, is proof we need to be, then at the same time he was baptized, he was healed miraculously of blindness. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost to do signs and wonders. And he never did the signs of the kingdom, but he did do signs of an apostle. So if you're going to say what are baptism is something we must do because Paul did it, then you're also going to have to say we're still doing uh, miraculous uh, healing and the baptism with the Holy Ghost for signs and wonders. And of course, that's not the case. The signs have ceased, and Paul said they would, and they have. And and so uh, Paul also spoke with tongues uh, and did all these things during the Acts period that uh, are, no, are no longer taking place, and we don't, we're not doing those things. The things we're to follow Paul in are the things he said in his epistles. We get the doctrine for this age from his epistles, okay? It's important to understand that. Much more could be said, but I hope that helps. And if you have any questions or comments, just send me an email or leave a comment here on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.